Hello everyone, welcome to a tutorial made by me, obviously. Today we'll be focusing on vectors, everything you need about vectors will be in this video. So, when I was searching on YouTube trying to figure out a way to, you know, learn vectors, this is back when I didn't know how to, I could not find anything, no one had a tutorial, I think I know why. There is so many things that go into vectors, so I'm going to try to explain it as easy as possible, but... If you get stuck, just remember you can always rewind, you can always go watch another video. Anyways, let's get right into it. So, there are uh, four main categories of the vector chips. And we have the location chips, usually used to get the X, Y, and Z, you know, where the vector is, stuff like that. Then we have the, um, the magnitude chips, those are a little bit more difficult to understand along with the math chips, which obviously are going to be difficult to understand. I mean, this math. And then we have the two variable chips, which if you know how variables work, you'll also know how these work. So we are going to start off with the vector split. Basically, the vector split is going to split a vector from any of these, you know, vector three outputs. So I'm going to take one from this vector gadget. We're going to put it right there. And it's going to split it. So it's going to split the vector into an X, Y, and Z, as you can see, X, Y, and Z. The vector create is essentially just the vector split, but backwards. You put in a list of coordinates, and it's going to turn it into a vector. And, um, yeah. The get forward vector is going to get the forward facing uh, way of an object and it's going to output into a vector so say I had say I had a cube what this chip would do is it would get the forward facing view of this cube and turn it into a vector alright so the vector gadget get vector is pretty simple what you're going to do is just connect a vector gadget to the direction and it will output the vector as a vector 3 that you can put into other builds. So the vector gadget is probably already been shown for these other chips. But basically it's going to uh, pinpoint a specific location in your room. So the get up vector is basically going to do the same thing as the get forward vector but this time it's going to get the up facing view of like I said last time a cube or whatever all right so now we're getting into the magnitude the magnitude is where I start to have less knowledge so if you want to look it up I don't I couldn't even find anything for the definition of magnitude but here, here, here's my try. So the vector three normalize, what it is gonna do is it's gonna output the vector. So say I put in a vector gadget and I put it right there. It's not gonna, just I did that. Say I wired it like that and the magnitude was two, let's say. It's gonna normalize it and put it back to one. So it's gonna convert this vector back into a vector one. So the vector get magnitude is pretty self-explanatory you connect a vector to it and it's just going to get the magnitude as you can see it's down one is down here one is down here if i'm going to switch it up to you know two let's say it's going to switch back over here to two so the vector three is the only one in this class i moved one out of this class because i realized it probably didn't belong and the vector 3 scale is its only, you know, basically it's only vector 3 thing for math specifics. Is it will take one vector, vector 3 and another vector 3 or an integer or float, whatever. It will multiply a vector. That's basically what it does. So it's going to multiply. Say so I connected this. It's going to multiply the vector by whatever I put in here. Okay, so these two are probably the easiest out to understand out of all of them. So, the list vector 
is basically just a variable, but you can output it as a list. And I'm pretty sure I haven't worked with lists before. If you know, okay. So yeah, it's just a list of vectors basically. The vector three variable itself just stores a vector three. So I could just store that right there and it's stored. All right, the rotate vector, the last class, that's right. I added one class because I felt like it needed its own class. Not because it's difficult, but because it just doesn't fit with anything else. So the rotate vector is actually really self-explanatory. You can probably already tell what it does just by the name, but it's going to rotate the vector. You can uh, put a coordination in there, which I have no clue what is. And then um, the vector three, you can connect to the point and it will rotate it or give you the result. Alright, so that was a lot of tough explaining, but what can I do with it now? Today, we are going to make a jetpack using vectors. Alright, so using our previous knowledge of vectors, we can create a jetpack using some simple, you know, wiring tactics, whatever. So first of all, we're going to get the vector. This isn't going to pinpoint a specific location in our room this time. This time, it's just going to show the direction. So I'm going to put it like that. It's just outputting the direction that I want my jetpack to go. So if I want my jetpack to go up, face the arrow up. If I want it to go sideways, face the arrow sideways. So on. All right. So now I'm going to get a velocity. I might talk about the velocity in a different video. But for right now, just know that the velocity is basically kind of what you see in games when you're falling. And as you fall, you start to go faster. So if I were to go fly up here and fall, I'm going to start to get faster and faster and faster as I fall down. That is what velocity is. And what we're doing here is adding velocity to the player. How do we do that? How do we trigger it so the jetpack works? We are going to use a trigger handle. A trigger handle is something that is only in experimental mode along with a couple other things that are in this project. But it is just the trigger handle that is in this specific jetpack. So, we want it to add velocity when we press the trigger. So we are going to wire this to the add velocity. We're going to wire the primary action pressed to the add velocity. And the target is going to be the player down here that is holding the trigger handle. The direction, the cheese direction is the way it wants us to go. Like the way it's going to add velocity. And this is what we did. We made the arrow point up. So the direction will go up, and now, if we hold our trigger, or if we press trigger, as you can see, it's kind of like a Flappy Bird thing. Now you can do something to make it so it holds, so if you hold it down instead of just having to spam it, I'm going to turn off the sound effects real quick, you can make it so uh, you can just hold it down and it will keep taking you up, because right now if I hold it down, it's not going to take me up. So the way that's done is using an event receiver, which I will talk about events maybe in another tutorial. We're just going to plop that right there. We're going to configure it. Put it to update 30 hertz. What this is going to do is every uh, 30 hertz, it's going to check if this is being held. So the way we're doing that is we're going to grab it if... And we are going to connect the primary action is held to the if. So every 30 hertz is going to check if the primary action is held. Sorry. The primary action is held. And if it is, then it's going to add velocity. We can just unwire that top thing. Now, as you can see, when I hold it, it keeps taking me up. I don't have to spam my trigger anymore. Of course I can if I wanted to, but I just hold it down, and it does that. 
So, that was a pretty tough explanation. Thank you for making it through. Thank you for watching the whole tutorial. I hope your project works well. I hope the things you do with vectors work well. And if you don't understand it, that's my bad. Watch another tutorial. But, until next time, I will see you guys later. Thanks for tutorialing with me.